The iPhone 6S, Apple's oldest supported iPhone right now, and the longest supported smartphone in history, receiving seven whole continuous years of software updates. And despite it being released back in 2015, the 6S is actually a lot more usable today than you might think. You know, the performance is still somewhat smooth, the cameras can take decent shots, and the display remains sharp by modern day standards. But unfortunately, like all old devices, the battery life has taken a huge hit after all these years. But with the phone only costing around 100 US on the used market, it's tough to argue against the seemingly incredible value here. And so, should you actually still go out and buy this phone in 2022? Well, in this video, I'm going to be covering that, as well as the design, display, cameras, performance, and battery life of the iPhone 6S from a 2022 perspective. And by the way, if you'd like to see something specific, the timestamps are in the description below. So starting off with the design, the iPhone 6S is relatively generic compared to other iPhones, sporting the home button, bezels, and 4.7 inch display, all of which are also seen on the iPhone 6, 7, 8, and the SE second gen. So it's nothing unfamiliar, but obviously it is going to feel dated compared to the all screen designs on today's handsets. But one thing I'm a fan of here is that the body is made from aluminium, which you don't actually see on high-end flagships anymore due to wireless charging only being possible with glass. So yes, that unfortunately means no wireless charging on here, but it does make the phone look and feel more premium, as well as making it lighter to hold, although admittedly, it can be a bit slippery at times. One downside of this body though is that it missed out on water resistance by one year before it was added on with the iPhone 7, so it would be a good idea to keep this phone away from liquids, as it probably won't survive any spills or drops in the toilet, but the 4.7 inch form factor feels snug and compact, you can use the phone with one hand, and because of its weight of 143 grams and thickness of 7.1 millimeters, it's very comfortable to use too. Now turning our attention to the home button, this is something that many people will favor over the gesture system on the new iPhones, hence why the iPhone SE released in 2020 still has it. The home button on here also packs second gen touch ID, which unlocks the phone incredibly fast, and in this day and age of masks, face ID on more recent iPhones isn't as convenient as it used to be. Plus, this this was also the last iPhone to have a physical clicky home button before it was replaced with the haptic home button the following year, which honestly feels a lot worse. To be honest, I've never been a fan of it. And how can I forget, this was also the last iPhone to sport the headphone jack before it was also butchered a year later on, you guessed it, the iPhone 7, with the wireless 159 AirPods conveniently being announced minutes after the 7. So if you're a fan of wired earbuds, well, you can still use them with the success. Now at this point, if you're anything like me, you'll be thinking about how much the iPhone 7 was a pretty watered down successor in comparison. The 6S has a very nostalgic feel to it due to this, and it truly was the end of an era, for better or for worse. But since it can run iOS 15, it's the best of both worlds. But all in all, I'm a fan of the 6S's design. The aluminium gives it a certain sleek and premium look that modern glass back phones just haven't been able to pull off. Moving on to the display, the one on here feels like it's barely aged at all. It is LCD, but it sports a resolution of 1334 by 750 along with a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch. Now sure, it's going to be missing quite a bit on paper compared to modern handsets like a higher refresh rate, OLED, and a better color reproduction, but because of its high pixel density, it still boasts a high-end and vibrant quality, you can't see any individual pixels, and for the average person who doesn't care about specs, the viewing experience holds up just fine, if not above average since it's so sharp. Now critics would say that this panel is actually bad because it's only limited to 720p and not the full 1080p like the 6S Plus that has boosted display specs to accommodate for its size. But again, since the regular 6S still has a high pixel density, the sharpness of the image doesn't lack, whether you're reading an article, watching a video, or playing a game. Although it can struggle with outdoor use due to its peak brightness only being around 550 nits, which in its defense was actually pretty typical for 2015. All in all though, this display has aged really well and especially for its price, is perfectly up to scratch in 2022. Now in terms of the cameras on here, the 6S still packs a half decent punch. It sports a single 12 megapixel rear shooter and a 7 megapixel selfie camera. And to be completely honest, this setup is far better off than you might think the one on a 7 year old smartphone would be. Sure, there's no portrait mode, night mode, or anything remotely fancy on here, plus the dynamic range definitely shows its age, but if you're in a situation with good lighting, it's completely possible to take some pretty darn decent shots that more than definitely deserve a pass in this day and age. Move on to low light, or in door situations though, and all of that just kind of goes out the window. Especially since the sensor is quite small compared to modern smartphone cameras and it isn't able to let as much light in. And obviously, the lack of optical image stabilization on the smaller 6S means that it's a lot harder than normal to eliminate blur in comparison to the 6S Plus that does have it. But like, considering that this is a 7 year old smartphone camera, honestly, who's complaining about the quality considering it's this good? I mean, of course it's not going to even come close to what modern handsets can do, but this shooter can still capture your memory 
memories well enough for the average person. Although moving on to the selfie camera, it's pretty mediocre compared to the main lens. Still usable by all means, but just not great. And it's just worse overall than is ideal. Now when it comes to video recording, the iPhone 6s was actually the first smartphone ever to be able to record in 4K. This was a huge deal back in 2015, and it was incredible at the time that you could record in such a high resolution on just your smartphone. It's basically the 2015 version of the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra being able to record in 8K. But in terms of how it's held up, well, like everything else on this phone, it's much better than you'd expect, and it's perfectly usable. Again, the dynamic range could use some work, there's no OIS, and below average lighting conditions are your main enemy here, but again, let's not forget that this sample was recorded on a 2015 smartphone, so it definitely deserves to be commended for how good it looks for what it is. Now moving on to the performance, this is pretty much the main area that helps this phone to feel much more modern than it really is. The 6S sports the Apple A9 chipset, as well as 2GB of RAM, and this was a huge performance breakthrough for Apple compared to the previous iPhone 6, which had only half the RAM, just 1GB, and that's why the 6 is stuck on iOS 12, and the 6S was able to live on to the current iOS 15. And it could even get iOS 16 this September, but I highly doubt it considering its age. Now obviously, the performance isn't shiny and snappy and blazing fast like it was 7 years ago, but it's more than usable. It still handles day-to-day -day tasks like checking social media, web browsing, light games and texting without any hiccups. Maybe the occasional lag once in a blue moon, but it's nowhere near painful to use. And even the heavy games I tested, like Pixel Gun 3D and Roblox, ran pretty much flawlessly. Okay, maybe not objectively flawlessly, there was the occasional road bump, plus the phone felt like I could fry an egg on it by the end, but by all means, they were still playable at 60fps. I am just so shocked at how well this 7 year old smartphone can perform, and I applaud Apple heavily for optimizing their aging chipsets for the modern software so well. It still sails through everyday tasks, and can even run intensive apps, should you choose to. But just for a change, let's talk about something that's unsurprisingly not that usable, the battery life. And it didn't take a bloodhound to sniff this one coming. The 6S is equipped with a 1715mAh cell, and due to a combination of the already small battery aging and degrading over time, along with more computationally heavy modern software, getting a full day's use on the 6S is pretty unlikely if you're anything more than a light user. Of course, with the 6S Plus you're getting a bigger battery that will be able to last a bit longer, but it's still anything but ideal. Now if you're someone who's always near a charger, or you only use your phone for the basics, this won't affect you as much of course, but it's still definitely a whole reason to avoid buying this phone, despite everything else holding up so well. And it's a shame because it really taints the whole thing about the phone being more than usable today. But again, it's just a fact that batteries will get worse over time, and the software sucks a lot more power than it did back in 2015. So there's not really too much they can do about it anyway. And so, with my review now out of the way, let's discuss if it's time to upgrade from the 6S if you're still using one, and if it's a good idea to still go out and buy one. In terms of whether you should upgrade from the 6S, well, there's not really any need to at this point if it's still doing everything you need it to, since it's going to receive software support until at least this September when iOS 16 is released. But it seems pretty unlikely. Seven years is a long time in our world of consumable electronics, and you have to draw the line somewhere before the hardware will give in. But then again, lots of people said it wouldn't get iOS 15 and 14, so you never know. But even after software support has dropped, you can still keep using the phone, it's just going to get slowly less usable as time goes on. Plus you won't be getting any new features of further updates. So I'd say probably start considering an upgrade, but there's honestly no hurry to go ahead with it. As for going out and buying one though, if you're on an extremely tight budget, or you're just getting something for a kid to play around with, or maybe for a grandparent to just text and call on, the 6S will probably do you proud for its price point of around 100 US on the used market, although please do not buy the 16 gig version because it's just too little storage to basically do anything. If you have the funds to do so though, you should definitely consider something newer that'll be better in the long term, such as the iPhone 11 or the 12, as these phones will have much improved cameras, battery life, performance and longevity. But to anyone still saying that Apple slows down old iPhones and makes them obsolete with software updates, this phone will counter any argument towards that. It's honestly just such good customer service how Apple has done this. Instead of slowing down the phone so that you'll be forced to buy a new one, their goal now seems to be making your device last as long as possible. And it makes you wonder just how long the new newest iPhones are going to last on updates. 8 years, 9 years, even a decade of software support could be in store for them the way things are going. And I truly commend Apple for showing that they care about people still using these old phones. But all in all, the iPhone 6S has had such a good run over the years. It's not only the longest supported smartphone ever made, but it's also maintained a pleasant user experience along the way, battery life aside, and it shows that Apple really cares about their users, even the ones who are still using their 7 year old devices. If you enjoyed this video, or found it useful in any way, please make sure you drop me a like, and subscribe to Textbury for more reviews, insights, and the occasional unboxing. Thank you so much for watching, this is Tom with Textbury, and I'll see you as always next time.